Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Cooking with Mazer. I promised you that we would have a, another one of these videos, and today I'm going to prepare to you actually one of my favorite dishes. I learned this dish from a Nintendo DS game called America's Test Kitchen, and it has about 200 recipes with little videos teaching you how to chop onions and everything. It's really neat, and this is one of the recipes they showed you. That's hot. I should not do that, as I do it again. Uh, anyway, this recipe is called One Pot Chicken and Rice, and it's a very simple, very quick recipe, and I find it um, really yummy. I will uh, post all the ingredients on comments and the descriptions below. So, if you want to try this out, just go to the description, and all the ingredients that I'm going to mention here will be listed for your convenience. Yes! Now, we got, a, uh, we got my pot, which is hot right here. It's warming up. And the first thing we got to do is play with onions! Onions are... Amazing. First you want to chop the onion. I'm going to take that part off. Then we're going to take the tips off. We don't need those. Goodbye. Chop the onion in half. I missed a center, so I'm chopping the onion about one third of the way. Then you take some of this part of the, the skin part off that you don't want. Throw that away and pick up the onion that you that you drop and you throw that away. Alright. My garbage can is full. I did not realize that. Got everything else prepared except for my garbage can, so we'll use that. Alright. Chuck the onion. Now, it's the funny thing about onions. I actually refused to eat things with onions in them when I was younger. And when I would cook, I'd skip out on onions. But, uh, when I started living alone and cooking for myself, I decided, you know what, I'm going to just bite the bullet and follow the instructions to the, the letter when it came with onions, and I discovered that I, you, know, you can't make a lot of dishes without the onion. The onion is something I have learned to appreciate quite a bit. The same goes with potatoes. I have learned to appreciate potatoes a lot. You can fry them, mash them, bake them, you can do all sorts of things, and as a kid, I, I just didn't like onions, but now I can't think of cooking without them. Alright, so... We're going to chop our onions up, and for the sake of time, and because it's just faster and easier, chop my onions into little cubes, and I got this little thing, it's a little blender, I got it for $5 or $10 at Big Lots, throw the onions in there, now, before we start that, we got our pot here, and the pot is heating up, so we're going to take a little oil. We're going to just pour just a little bit of oil, just enough. There we go, a little bit more, just a little bit more there. Yeah, and then you kind of swirl the oil around. Woo! Dancing oil! So we could get the onions nice and cooked. So I threw the onions into my little blender. Alright. And the reason I got this little blender was um, a while ago I had one of those cool little onion dicers. It's you know it's like it's a what's it called? Mandolin. I think it, you, you cut the onion in half, put the onion there, and you, just take the, and you push it down, and boom, chopped onions. Easy peasy. 
that broke. And that really made me sad. So this part's too big. I'll chop that up again. All right. Take your onions. You use one. Oh, you hear that? Yeah, that's good stuff right there. Now you want to use one full onion for this. One full onion. It could be a yellow onion or a white onion. Onion. Let's get the rest of the onion in there. Throw this stuff in the blender. Salt, which is amazing. Do -do -do -do. 
too soon, all the juices come out, the fat drips out, and you lose a lot of that, you know, great moisture, you know, and you don't really, you don't want that, that's, that's bad, horrible. Dry chicken is a curse. And, uh, it, it take, you know, when you're first starting cooking, it, it's not, it, 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 it's, it takes a practice to get the chicken done perfectly well, you know. So, like I said, you go with the dry, you go with the darker meats, you know, and that will make sure your chicken stays. You have a better chance of it ending up being very moist, really yummy. All right, all right, we're almost done with the chicken portion, and the onions are still nice and warm. Heat them up a little faster, and we'll chop up the rest of the onions right now. Oh! That was awesome. I don't know if you saw that. I hope you did it, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Is I didn't put the lid on my blender all the way. It shot onions at me. Now, if you're using a blender like I am, you do not need to worry if your onions are not fully chopped. They will. You can break them up, boom, look at that, boom. They don't need to be tiny bits, because when onions are nice and cooked, they become very soft. There's no very little crunch to them. Let's take the chicken out. Yeah, that looks good. One for you, and one for you. Now, normally we would use the same pot, because you want all that, you know, the, the chicken fat and everything. But unfortunately, I screwed up, like I said. So we're going to take the chicken fat, we're going to put it with our onions. Get all that good stuff in with our onions. Beautiful. There. Now we take our onions that we're cooking, we want to put the rest of our onions in. Make sure you take out the blade so you don't cut yourself like I almost did. You know what's sad is this time with this video, I try to get everything nice and prepared. I had all my ingredients out, and yet I still am making like tiny little mistakes. I guess I'll, you know, it's something you'll get used to as time goes on. All right, rinse my blender out. packs of chicken thighs. I think I'll just use one for a bit. Because like I said, you can cut up the chicken. If you want more chicken, you just cut them up after you're done cooking, before you serve them. Chop the top, stir it all up, get a nice little random assortment of chicken. And isn't that a great word, chicken? Like, who looked at, a, who looked at the first chicken and said, that's a chicken? Chicken, 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 chicken. Like, what is the origin of the word chicken? I don't know. Clean up some of the water I spilled. <coughs> Always try to keep your kitchen clean. Take a spoon. Oh, stir, stir, stir. I oh, hear that. Hear how amazing that is. Stir them, make sure they don't burn. And once you're done with the onions, you're going to take your garlic. I use the little powder thing. And then, now this is a good tip. That um, I came up with. thing set aside strictly to show off to everybody because I thought it was a good tip. I went out of my way to get one and I set it right here. Right here. Ah, oh, there it is. Under my plate. Oh, man. Onions. For anybody who knows
knows how to get rid of this uh, fumes of an onion so it doesn't burn your eyes, uh, please leave me a comment below. I'd really appreciate that. Alright, now here's a little tip. As the onions cook, you make sure they're not burning or anything. Like that. Perfect. Now, you take a clove of garlic. So, for these little things, which are really helpful, you take a half a teaspoon. teaspoon of garlic, look at that, boom, that's good enough. I like using like a full teaspoon because I love garlic, so you throw it in there. Now, what I'll say about my little tip is the following. Uh, you need like a fourth of a teaspoon of crushed red peppers, however, what I discovered is a fourth of a teaspoon of crushed red peppers is also the same amount that you can get at pizza joints. That's right, I got this on my way home after I bought the ingredients today. I stopped at round table and they gave me a whole bunch of these. So I use these all the time because it's the perfect measurement. It really is. It's just beautiful. It's like boom. I need crushed red peppers in a specific amount. You get one of these packets and then bam! Just like that. Except you don't spill some on your oven when you're trying to show off. So that just happened to us. So you add the crushed red peppers, you add the garlic, and you stir it all up. And hey. I want to add just a little more crushed red peppers because some of it did spill in my oven. Next time I do that, I want to actually look where I'm spilling. So just a little bit. You don't want too much unless you like it, like a little bite. I just I like just enough of spice. Or you have a nice spicy aftertaste, you know what I'm saying? Alright, so you stir all this up. And when it's all fragrant, it takes about a minute, maybe less. Actually, no, I lied, about 20 seconds. Then you get your rice, a cup of rice. Boom. You take your rice, you dump it in. Here's the key, here's a little tip. You watch the edges of the rice. When the edges of the rice become translucent, that's when you know that you're ready for the next step. So you just keep, keep a close eye on your rice, keep a close eye. And the key here is do not look away, do not leave. And do something, come back, because with the little moisture there is, with the oil, and the chicken fat. It's easy for the rice to, to stick at the bottom of the, the pot. And if you turn away and you go and do something, uh, you are going to get a little piece of rice stuck in the edges of your pot. It burns. Burnt rice is no good because it ruins the flavor of everything else. And that's no bueno. No bueno at all. So just keep a good eye. I'm just going to keep an eye on the edges. Now, I'm using brown rice, and brown rice usually cooks a little longer. But once we get all the ingredients in here, everything thrown together, we're going to take a little break because it takes about 20 minutes to cook, and then we'll be done. So, but let's finish this part. Now, rice. Rice is something I've learned to... I've always liked rice. I mean, who doesn't? like rice, right? But um, you, it's become a more of a big, it's a bigger staple in my diet now because it's, it's, you can make it quick and it fills you up. And all you really need is like butter or, or, or cheese. I use fat-free cheese. Watch my cholesterol. So all you need is uh, just a little bit of flavor. And you know, you use brown rice for more fiber and, and give it a little more healthy. And yeah, it's starchy and all that, but still. Now, while the rice is uh, cooking, I'm going to open my uh, can of chicken broth. What just broke? What broke? Seriously. <laughs> 
do is after I put the chicken in, just uh, push the chicken down a little so everything's all, there we go. All right, now here's the cool part, here's the fun part. You're going to basically uh, cover it. No. You cover your pot. Set your timer. Now it's going to take about 25 minutes for me, since I'm using brown rice. It might take a little longer. And then you're pretty much good to go. All you got to do is pop into the kitchen every now and then. You want to stir it up and make sure nothing you know sticks to the bottom, nothing burns. And what's going to happen is the um, all the liquid is going to basically steam the food and cook everything. So you're going to have a nice cooked rice, you're going to have very good thoroughly cooked chicken. And then there you go. So we're going to let this uh, do its thing for the next 25 minutes or so. And then we'll return to add the final ingredients and then serve and then show all you wonderful people who have tolerated this video for so long the end product. So. We will see you guys back in 25 minutes. Welcome back, everybody. <clears throat> now, I said I'd be back in 30 minutes. Sadly, that was not the case. I've never made this recipe with brown rice before, and I do not think I'll be making this recipe with brown rice after this. Or it took, uh, it took actually two cans, because I had to add more of chicken broth. And it took about a good hour before the brown rice was cooked all the way. So when the chicken, what I did was, when the chicken was done, I took the chicken out so it wouldn't overcook. Let the brown rice do its thing. Everything is nice and yummy. And uh, that's awesome. That's cool. So we're going to add the final bits. And the final bits include, I want to take a little bit of corn, and you don't, need to, you don't need to heat up the corn or anything, what you do is, you just take the corn, you don't need to worry about putting it on a fryer or anything, or heating it up in a microwave, just pour the corn, frozen or refrigerated, as much as you want, into the pot. Pot, 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 corn, 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 corn. yummy, yummy, yummy. Awesome. And then, you can use bags of mixed vegetables. I do not because I cannot tolerate green beans. It's not a personal preference thing. I literally cannot eat them. They, um, they're just too bitter. I just can't get them down. Anyway, so we're going to add par uh, carrots. We're going to add parrots. We're going to add carrots and corn. Um, sometimes I add peas. Peas are yummy too. Like I said, they don't need to be um, microwaved or anything beforehand. They could be frozen. Because what you do is, after you throw them in, you uh, want to get some cheese. There you are. Yummy, yummy, fat free cheese. I'm going to stir in the corn and the carrots with the rice and the chicken. There we go. Now when you see the, the heat from the rice and the heat from the chicken, what you do is, uh, cool when it's cooling down to a point where you can eat it, you just put a lid on it and all that will heat up and defrost the corn and the carrots or whatever vegetables you're using. So I want to put my, the rest of my cheese in here. Goodbye cheese. And then we're going to just mix this all up. Yummy, yummy. Chicken in my tummy. And uh, there we go. And uh, here. Now let's show off how it turned out. I'm going to get some of the rice, which is usually my favorite part. Bunch of rice, with carrots, 
See a nice chicken thigh right here. No more rice, because rice is awesome. There you go. Presentation is everything. So, and ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. Let me turn the lights on in this area. And doesn't that look great? Right? Oh my goodness. Where is my spoon? I've got my little spoon right here. Just take a, let's try some of the chicken thigh. A little bit of the rice. Oh! That chicken, the chicken's perfect. Look at that. Try, try another slice of the chicken right here. Oh my god. That's amazing. The chicken's perfectly moist. Um, the broth soaked into the rice beautifully. And it's just, it's a good, simple, quick, easy dish. It takes, with, with the white rice, prep and cooking, it'll take you maybe 30 to 45 minutes, maybe shorter if you're a quick, uh, quicker at preparing than I am. But yeah, <clears throat> excuse me, it serves about, you know, maybe four or five servings, depending on what you consider a serving size. But there you go, uh, chick one pot chicken and rice, brought to you by me. Again, I'll list the ingredients and everything in the description. And uh, this recipe was brought to you by the Nintendo DS game, um, America's Test Kitchen. If you have a DS or a 3DS, I highly recommend to give America's Test Kitchen a try because it is surprisingly really cool. And I'll bring you, bring you guys some more recipes from that uh, little video game later. But uh, I got a great lunch to enjoy, and I hope you enjoyed watching me today on... Cooking with Mazer. Thank you very much. I'll see you next time.